Times you were the one that got away from me But now I got you in my arms, baby, stay with me I'm talking more to come over and spend the day with me I say forever, I mean it, baby, just wait and see Say I'm the lucky one, baby, I'm just grateful <laughs> You're truly my better half, it take two That's why I treat you like treasure, I'm so blessed uh, Giving you everything, all of me, no less uh, What can I say, it's so right uh, I'm thinking about where we headed And baby, the future looks so bright uh, Stuck in these moments with you right now All in my feelings got me saying I love you, planning a life now huh? Cause baby this is real, real Baby this is love See huh? so baby this is real, real Cause I, I can't get enough Every day, all I do is think about us Wonder why it took so long Could it be love? I feel for you In my free time Mexican Rican honey, no lie. Call a dual exhaust baby with my pistols on the side. Born gangster, cause her daddy straight from the shy lights. She can cook a mean pot of Puerto Rican rice. This love could stop flights like protesters at O'Hare. Rita Lee heard me said, Wifey ain't going nowhere. And all day, every day, thinking of my queen. Beautiful in every way, dreaming about our dream team. The perfect daughter and a son to carry my name. My fame just doing us driving in fly lanes. And God's been telling me the stars are aligned. Cause honestly, I think about. Our future right in my mind I think it's time for us to move another chess piece Drink a little wine, take a vacation next week I think it's time for us to move another chess piece Drink a little wine, take a vacation next enough. week Every day, all I do is think about us Wonder why it took so long Could it be love? I feel for you In my free time the show everybody welcome to the show let's go Woo! welcome back everybody it's your boy Enrico no suave here on the Rico no suave talk show welcome back to another great night it might be day wherever you may be but welcome to the show everybody we are so happy that you're here back with us because we are ready to have a great time with you and you already know when I say we I got my co-host Valerie Malesio with me what's up Valerie hey. It's another episode. I'm happy to be here. Yes. It is a great night, day, wherever you're at. 
Either way, I'm happy to be here. We have some great stuff lined up for you guys today. Yes, and we're going to get right into it, everybody. And I hope that you guys are ready. But if you are ready, make sure you share this video <laughs> as far as for us here on the Rico No Suave Show, because it's going to get deep today. We're going to have a really great conversation. Mm -hmm. But of course, she's famous and we're, she's coming up soon. But the first thing we're going to talk about, everybody, is what we've all been talking about for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And it kind of throws a little bit of twist of when there's protesting, when there's actually, you know, police brutality. And we also talked about a little bit of racism in regards to what America and how America is actually going. All right. So let's let's roll this first picture. <laughs> so this first one is uh, you guys already know that Tyree Nichols, Tyree Nichols uh, was a good person during that time of being stopped by the police officers. And when he got stopped by the police officers, it went the wrong way it didn't go the right way that he's expected so let's go to that next one so what happened was is that he was actually beaten by five officers it's very hard to be able to see this but also it's even worse when you also saw the video I couldn't watch the whole video myself because I couldn't imagine what someone would actually have to go through in regards to this let's go to the next one so when he was getting beaten it was by five police african-american i would just say color men and because this was these guys were part of the police force it took a twist in regards to what to really protest about and how things were actually going so we'll put up the last one there was emt that actually was part of what was going on during this time and what happened is, is that during this time of being able to respond in a certain amount of time in order for them to help this gentleman once he was beating and he was only asking what was going on. Why did you guys pull me over with no excuse, with no issues at all as far as that he had towards the officers? All right, we're going to bring this back to us. So. So, Valerie, the thing about this whole thing is, and of course, the first thing I want to ask you, because I'm going to let you start with this one, because I have, of course, some things that I want to get off my chest in regards to this. You as a mother, I can imagine what the mother and as a parent could be going through as their son is no longer, well, I'm sorry, that their son was beaten and then three days later he passed. What is your what is your thoughts about this? I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of not so much thoughts as you ha as I say feelings because I say that he called for his mother. Yeah. While the beatings were happening, and and it's just, uh, it's difficult that we are here again, and again, and again, <laughs> mm -hmm. and again that you know that we have a, a system that, and, and maybe I shouldn't generalize that it's not the system, maybe it's just these individuals, but it seems to be very happening very often. Yeah. Um, that you would think it's okay for you to beat somebody like that because they're not complying or responding the way you want them to. Yeah. When is, do you ever need that many people on one individual person? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it's just, that was intentional. Yeah. You wanted to inflict harm. You were not trying to just detain somebody. Sure. You were trying to harm and hurt this person. Maybe at the moment you didn't think you were going to kill them. I would think that you knew you were going to kill them. You should have enough training that would make you understand how much this can kill somebody i mean but again I, I, those are assumptions yeah um th there's a lot of yeah again a lot of feelings and we can't keep making um excuses for it because right away well well let's dig up this from you know 20 years ago we're not talking about anything from any but we're talking about a specific situation that happened and this person from my understanding didn't even have any you know, reckless history. He just got pulled over. And I mean, that, what, that's the job. You pull people over. Right. You give them tickets. You, it's, you know, it's not your job to beat them or 
punish them. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's where there seems to be some misunderstanding, you know, as far as how these things are handled. Again, you'll have, you'll have the, those out there saying, oh, well, they were just doing their job. He probably did X, Y, Z. I can't agree with that statement in any way, shape, or form. Right. Look how many men there were there. Five. When is that ever okay? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I'm going to try to keep this not as long-winded as possible. Very frustrating, very aggravating. As a mother, I'm livid. Um, um, as a human, I'm livid because um, this we've got to really something has to has to change. Yeah. The whole situation with the ambulance drivers. Yeah. yeah. That's something new. Yeah. We've not seen that before, unless I'm mistaken. Have you ever seen an ambulance driver? get arrested or at all no in regards to i feel like that's i think they new. got fired uh i think they got fired and i think they are probably going to go to court as well too. yeah that's something yeah. new we've not seen that before so right. maybe there is starting to be some change as far as accountability yep. of the people involved i did hear they said that if you are around there yeah and if you are again um if even if you're not partaking but you are there yeah that you are still accessory, you are still part of that crime. Yeah, you know you're just as as good as just like the others being punished. So, hopefully, we can find some sort of ground to make implement some permanent changes, so we don't have to lose lives this way. Yeah. So, guys, I'm 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 gonna do this real quick for you guys that that watch our show. Um, you know our our show is. It's all about diversity. Our show is all about what we think towards humanity as being passionate about people. But the one thing that will anger me is we understand that killing someone out of racism, we definitely know that that's wrong. And we've talked about racism multiple times when it comes to someone either passing away, someone dying black and brown. But then we also talk about how you know, how people need to be disciplined. In this case, because there was the George Floyd, there was the, the mm -hmm. Taylor, there was, um, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not getting, um, I'm getting a brain fart right now. Um, the guy that was running down, he was just jogging, then two guys came out and shot him. And we knew that there was some racism that was actually involved in this. There was also some psychiatric issues that was going on here. Mm -hmm. This here, when it comes to the own race of black and brown killing your own, we all know that this has actually happened before in communities where there are activists that talk about this. And there are things where we're trying to raise awareness of bringing down gun violence, right? We're trying to say these carjacking by minorities, that's African-American, also Latinos, that's actually carjacking 83-year-old people, 80-year-old people, 59. Then you hear even young people getting carjacked and having their lives taken in our own community or around the area. Now, of course, we're in Chicago. What hurts me the most about this is it's the same color that's in power killing and kicking someone for no apparent reason when all he did was just ask what did i do or why did you pull me over right what the, the tendencies that yeah. i'm hearing that i'm feeling here is kind of that ghetto hood mentality of get out the car i have power just because you're the same color as me you're not going to get disciplined uh any any differently because i'm the same color as you I felt that there was something going on either here where they felt that they were so much into power or they were into the, they were in this to be able to just kill somebody that night. Right. And I think for us as, as a human race, everyone, I feel that when now the protesting, now this protesting itself in regards to, you know, someone from a different color killing someone else from a different color, this is not the case anymore. Now it's about brutality of what the police officers are actually doing but now how do you charge them now that, what do you do and you just hit the nail on the head because i'm so mad the other that. ones were like like you said racism you can at least wrap your brain around it you understand where it's coming that's from. correct you know but now it's not just a race thing yeah. this is a police thing yep and there's nothing around that not at all it is a police thing not at all this you know? is this is definitely 
now of how do people feel when it gets pulled over now? They're talking about Memphis, right? This has happened in Memphis, happened in the South, right? Which is known for a lot of racism. We're talking about mm-hmm. Alabama, Tennessee. We're talking about Mississippi. We right. talked about Memphis. We talked right. about where we talked about a little bit about slavery and the racism and things like that. But the crazy thing about it is now is that it went a little bit overboard to now your own race is killing. And we know that that happens in, in, in the community, right? We right. know that there's bad apples that's out there that kills mm-hmm their own kind and doing wrong things because of discipline. Something's wrong there. The EMT, for them to be able to respond to another call before getting to that call was a held off in regards to the structure that they have in place of trying to save someone's life. Yes, right. they do feel accountable. Someone in the comments said that the 911 responder should be mm-hmm. held accountable for that as well too. It goes up the chain. Everyone itself should be held accountable. Well, it's supposed to be a team effort. There you go. Yep. Someone calls 911. Yes. It's dispatched. It's, you know, everybody has a, a role in this. Yes. And the ball was really, really dropped. I yeah. mean, uh, on that front, yeah. it started with the police officers. Yes. Because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be serve and protect. Yep. You know, I think the part that gets missed is you're supposed to even protect the guys that you don't want to. Even if you're upset, yep. even if you had a bad day, yep. you know, it's a special type of role to have to be a police officer. You do deal with difficult people. Yeah, it's not an easy job, but I feel like you have to understand how to deal with people then, because like you said, it sounded like in this situation, <laughs> you just took the power and t- took a position of power and it ran to your head and you ran with it. These police officers, I think <laughs> I, I keep hearing the name Scorpion. The Scorpions. So I heard the Scorpions was a different division to be able to protect from the 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 gangbangers and for drug dealers and and specifically on that task force. Probably another word for we had gang unit back then. Like the task force, right? Back then we had gang unit task force when we were younger that we would see their little it's a crew, (laughs) a crew of cops. I'm gonna leave it off with this. Scorpions. It's deadly. Um, it's, it's a deadly word to be able to use for five people or in that task force, because you never know when someone might get bit just by something like this. That's a poisonous aspect of things that they actually did mentality wise. So I want you guys to let us know what you think in the comments itself. We definitely normally don't take this long in regards to this, but this is something that's been around the world, but. We want you guys to tell us exactly what you guys think about this. And we're going to definitely use this as a segment for our show to talk about yeah, this and absolutely. cut this up so you guys can see exactly how we feel on the Rico No Suave show in regards to this act. But please, please let's, leave comments. Let's yeah, let's let get this know. going because this young lady is, you know, let's she's, regroup. Yeah, she is. She is ready. And hopefully yes. she's not in tears. I hope she's still smiling <laughs> to be here. Everybody, I want you guys. This young lady has been seeing the, her book. Truth, lies, Alzheimer's, it's secret faces. This book has been known as seen on TV for ABC, NBC, CBS, from all over as far as with different networks. Because this subject itself is such a, because the, the disease is so common that sometimes we as human beings tend to forget what it really does to our loved ones. And I had a lot of people that actually asked me about this, but this young lady has actually is upcoming. She's also co-author for this book as well, too. I do have to give a big shout out, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, Doug Collins, Douglas Collins as well, too, that actually on the show, we were talking a little bit about it. But I want you guys to stand up. If you got a book, put, put your book up because I want you to read this. Put your hands together for none other than Lisa Skinner. Let's go, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Rico. Hi, Valerie. How Hi. are you? How are you? Uh, after that unbelievably heart-wrenching story, uh, just, you know, I can't believe it's happened again. But that's... Yeah, yeah I'm so sorry that had to come before your interview <laughs> but well, we just couldn't let it go without having to say something yes and show respect for the situation and provide awareness talked about just like alzheimer's disease needs to be talked about so yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I'm privileged to um 
to be on on the show with you. Thank you for having me. And yes. thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. So we're going to get right into it, Lisa. We're happy to have you on the show. Um, so one of the things that we want to talk about is how what influenced you to actually write this book, to be the co-author of this book itself. So tell us how that process actually went for you. It's kind of a complicated um, series of things that occurred in my life. So the very first experience I ever had with Alzheimer's disease was about 50 years ago when my grandmother um, started showing some very bizarre behaviors. And I'd go over to visit her. She only lived a couple miles from me. And she would tell me about these birds that were living in her mattress and they would come out at night through a hole and peck at her face. And she would tell me about these rats that she saw running along her walls and the men that were always trying to break into her house and hurt her and steal her jewelry. And so uh, I'd never seen um, this type of behavior in my grandmother before. And then all of a sudden it was um, just a regular thing and it, Turns out she was diagnosed with what was called back then senile dementia. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in college, I took a class on human behavior and that was it for me. I knew that that was the career path I wanted to go down. I'm absolutely fascinated in what makes people tick like the policeman that you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were they thinking? Right. So yeah. anyway, I ended up kind of accidentally um, becoming a behavior, spe not accidentally becoming a behavior specialist. I mean, I intentionally did that, but <laughs> accidentally becoming a behavior specialist in the elder care field. And I did that for decades. And then I branched off and started my own consulting business where I uh trained family members and caregivers how to uh, navigate the challenges of living with Alzheimer's disease and dementia on a day-to-day -day basis. And I had heard from so many families, I've never heard any of this information before that you're sharing with us. Uh, it's very difficult to find information on this disease. And I was called over to a client's house. Her father had recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and um, her mother-in-law had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And it had been about two years prior where both parents were diagnosed with these brain diseases. And she said, Lisa, I, I'm desperate. I called you over here today just to kind of pick your brain and get some information. We are at our wits end. We are frustrated. So we talked for the next two and a half hours. And she asked me, she and her husband asked me just a, a, a ton of questions. And she stops me after two and a half hours. And she says, you know, Lisa, you have successfully answered our questions and given us more information than we've been able to get from any other source in the last two years since our parents were diagnosed with these diseases. And then she says to me, she says, you really need to write a book. And then she says, it would be really selfish of you not to share what you know with the world. Mm. Speaking from wow. our experience, we are desperate for this kind of information and nobody will give it to us. Not the doctors, nobody. And because I had been hearing this for so many decades at the time, I've been doing this professionally for going on 30 years now. I had heard this before. I had in the back of my mind, I need to write a book. I knew what they were saying was absolutely true because that had been my experience as well. But that 
was the impetus that actually got me to sit down and put the pen to paper and start writing the book because nice. so many people that I've personally run across and know of are in the same situation with their loved one. And it's only getting worse. Yeah. Um, we, we, we look at this as the next global medical crisis. Mm. There are so many people projected to develop Alzheimer's disease just in the next 25 years. The numbers are projected to triple between now and the year 2050. And hmm. as a society, and I'm talking worldwide, it's not just the U.S. We're, right. The numbers are going to triple in the U.S. The numbers are going to triple worldwide if we don't find a cure or a treatment. And we are absolutely not prepared for the onslaught of people that are going to develop Alzheimer's disease. And as you know, people who are in their mid to late stages of the disease absolutely cannot care for themselves. Right. So it's going to be a hardship on so many people. And that's why I feel so strongly and I've dedicated my life to raising awareness about this disease because the one common thread that I have realized in the almost 30 years that I've been counseling families is people don't have a comprehensive understanding about what this disease is doing to their loved one. And it's got to start there by understanding the disease. Yes, right. yes. You know, um, one of the things is, is that because you're hitting, you're definitely hitting a lot of great points Absolutely. Uh, in regards to how the book influenced you. Um, the the one question i do have when you found out back then of course and yeah they did call it dementia right or it wasn't really alzheimer's but it was kind of dementia when you found out about the dementia phase what the the faces that uh i'm sorry the faces that you were going through as a human being to be able to feel that was it an up and down type feeling or was it like, I'm worried all the time? Are you referring to, to my grandmother, my yes. very first experience? Okay, yes. that's a great question because I'll tell you what happened. So my grandmother, what was happening, she, she actually did have Alzheimer's disease, but they didn't call it that back then. They called it senile dementia, dementia. but it was, it was Alzheimer's disease. And she was showing the gamut of a lot of the behaviors that we see with this disease. And it doesn't happen to everybody. She was hallucinating. She was, she was seeing rats. She was seeing birds. She was um, having delusions and she was paranoid. All three of those are common behaviors that accompany Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. Mm. So, um, what she was doing, unbeknownst to us, her daughter, which who was my mother, and, and of course her grandchildren, she was calling the police um, three, four, five times a day reporting oh, wow. all the things that I've <clears throat> described. And of course, at first they took her seriously and sent the um, police officers to check out her claims. And they didn't find any evidence of anything because there was nothing there. And, but she continued to call the police. And then what they did was they tracked my mother down, came over to our house and said to my mother, I was standing in the room and that police officer just looked my mother square in the eye. And she said, ma'am, you've got to do something about your mother. She's a nut. And we oh, don't wow. have the resources to keep going over there, sending my officers over to her house for all these false claims. And she continues to call them in. And, you know, I knew there was something wrong with my grandma. She wasn't the same person that I had grown up with. But for this police officer to scold my mother like that and call my grandmother a nut um, has stuck with me through this day. 
I knew she wasn't a nut. She was a sweet little old lady who was um, just as soft and shy and demure. And it was obvious there was something wrong with her. And they just didn't get that. Wow. Wow. She wasn't a nut. This is not a mental illness. This is brain disease that's damaging the brain cells in our brains. It's much different than mental illness. And yeah. right. to just kind of haul off and, and, and make that demand to my mother um, was, was telling to me about people's um, ignorance and ignorance. naivety yeah. about the disease. And unfortunately, things are better now. It's been 50 years, but they haven't improved significantly. People just don't understand this disease. There are so many myths about it that need to be straightened out and dispelled. And that's actually how I came up with the title of the book, Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's Disease. It's secret faces. There are so many misconceptions about the disease. There's so many myths about the disease. And the secret face is really refers to all of these unique signs, symptoms, and behaviors that accompany the disease that people really don't put two and two together because right. most people believe that this disease is exclusively about memory loss and confusion. Yeah. And it is so much more complicated than that. And my plea to everybody out there who is on this journey, who's going to start this journey, they need to understand what the disease does to a person's brain and all of the um, results that happen because of the damage to the brain. Yeah. Yeah, you know absolutely. So, and I think, um, sorry, is it okay for, um, for our viewers, what is, uh, briefly, can you tell us what the difference is between dementia and Alzheimer's? Oh, I sure can. And that's a great question because... Um, because you mentioned a, both and you, and you distinguish yeah, the two. I will definitely distinguish the two because a lot of people think they're either the same or they're two completely separate diseases. I've had so many people say, no, my mom doesn't have Alzheimer's. She has dementia. <laughs> uh, so let me explain yeah. this so people understand. Alzheimer's disease is a brain disease. There are over a hundred brain diseases that cause dementia. So when we are using the term dementia, we are really using it as a broad-based term to describe the symptoms that accompany one of these brain diseases that causes dementia. Alzheimer's is the um, most well-known, it's the most common brain disease that causes all of these symptoms and behaviors that we see. So think of it this way. You go to the doctor, he asks you, what brings you in today? And you start describing how you feel. I have a splitting headache. I have body aches. I have a fever. Um, I have uh, a sore throat. Well, what you're doing is you're describing your symptoms to your doctor. And then you're going to hope that based on his deduction of what's going on with you, he's going to tell you that you have a cold. Maybe you have the flu. Or maybe you have COVID, but mm -hmm. what you describe to him are your symptoms and you're hoping he will be able to tell you what's causing those symptoms. This is the exact same analogy that using the term dementia means. When we say dementia, we are actually referring to all the symptoms that accompany these brain diseases. Um, Perfect. And, yeah. So does that does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You Thank know what you. we're going to do is we're going to go to a quick commercial break. But Lisa, we are so happy that you are here with us um, because a lot of people are coming and we will get to some of the comments. But the, the this is so deep to us because as 
someone that's being educated because we love people that's being educated on our show Absolutely, and we're getting educated yes. as well too because we, we also went through that as far as we, I know I went through that with my, my parents my grandfather uh, had, and your father yeah, as well my grandfather grandfather yeah. okay so when we come back we're going to get more into it everybody we have none other than the co-author of Truth Lies and Alzheimer's it's Secret Faces everybody Lisa, Lisa Skinner. Skinner we'll be right back everybody a little 30 <laughs> seconds we'll be right back And we're back. And we're back. Yes, <laughs> and we're back. Hi, Lisa. You still with us? I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought maybe you were working on another book back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lisa. So, you know, for people that's just now tuning in, mm -hmm. uh, we, we were talking about in regards to how Lisa got influenced. And, of course, some of her loved ones actually had the dementia. I'm sorry, back then it was dementia. But actually, you know, to us, it's Alzheimer's. And also how, you know, it's funny how we were talking about the police officers, right? right? In regards to psychiatric issues where you automatically think that someone's crazy and you really don't know if they actually have a disease or not, right? right. And you're just calling them, oh, she's a nut, right? And we're talking about, of course, when someone's calling the police multiple times, you got to know that there's something definitely wrong, right? And right. in this case, there is a disease that that the police officers didn't know or just regular, you know, law-abiding citizens uh, would probably thought that somebody is actually crazy or you would know that someone has an issue, right. right? This book itself is a big influence in regards to the secrets, the, its secret faces. And, you know, when I think about its secret faces, one of the reasons why I asked you about what did you feel like? When you were going through these phases that you were actually feeling, it's kind of those secret faces that that's behind you as an author to say, you know, my face was happy one time. My face was sad. I was confused. The next time I'm like, we got to go to the doctor. Somebody help me. Right. <laughs> and then. And then that's, that's when it takes you to that next level. I don't right? even know if it's appropriate for me to laugh, but you right. just said that. So <laughs> but it's secret faces because it will probably be something like us. We're like, I don't know what, what I'm confused, feeling right. Can the you confusion. show me what's the confused face? The confused is like, oh, man. <laughs> what am I supposed to feel right now? Well, I mean, right? the journey though, right? Yes. In the book, like... Like I was glad to I went I always wanted to know what the difference were between the two. I kind of get it. Yes. But as you mentioned, Lisa, there's so much going on with this and it's taken you a journey to kind of get all this stuff together, yep. which is so nicely packaged in your books that we can as you know everyday people can reference now because it is such a broad topic as yeah. far as the different diseases that cause Alzheimer's or the dementia that caused and dementia and Alzheimer's they work hand in hand right because I know my grandfather was from what I understand it was dementia um and I do know that you know the not remembering and you know when I saw him he thought I was my mom and right. thought my son was my older brother so I don't know if the memory just stops at a certain place for a while, like, I think the how delusion, does that work? Remember the delusion that uh, you were referring to? With the birds? The delusion or, or thinking of something else. Yeah, like almost like you can be like hallucinating in a way. Would you no, also I mean, put I hallucinating? Was there. He, I was there, but he just thought I was somebody else. And he clearly knew who I was because I, I was around him, you know, my whole life growing up. So what would you, yeah, so that's kind of a good point. So Lisa, have you ever ran into a situation like that when it came to Alzheimer's where the person was actually they I was see like the erased face. from his memory like he didn't remember me yeah but the, he understood your face but he called you someone else he called me my mother your mother yeah so how does that work Lisa how, if you explain to you how and why that's happening because it's it happens to almost everybody and um 
Rico, you brought up a, a really good point that is absolutely spot on about you don't know what face to feel. So many people, family members and caregivers, they go through that. They don't know what face to feel. Mm. Should I be angry? Should I become impatient? Should I become confused? And right. it's, those are so real emotions that go with this disease. It's um, probably the toughest job anybody will ever take on. But let me explain to you, because I think this will really nail what happens to the brain home and help a lot of people understand why it's so common for our loved ones when they get to a certain point in their disease to not recognize us. So think of the short-term memory as being hooked up to a switch that can turn it on or turn it off, just like a light. Mm -hmm. In the beginning stages of the disease, that switch is on most of the time. So the short-term memory is functioning properly. Once in a while, that shift, that switch goes off, but not that frequently in the beginning stages. By the mm -hmm. middle stages of the disease, the switch is on half the time and off half the time. And when the switch is off, meaning the short-term memory is basically short-circuited, people start pulling from their long-term memory because the long-term memory stays intact throughout the entire disease. I'm gonna focus on what happens when it's being when it's turned switched on and off but i just want to say by the end of the disease that switch turns the short term memory function off almost entirely the short term memory is completely erased and people basically are living their lives on rewind somewhere in their past and all they know are the memories from their past because that's what's still intact so wow. let me let me um, explain it this way. So Valerie, sometimes your grandpa knew you were his granddaughter and sometimes he thought you were his mother. Now, people with Alzheimer's disease slash dementia do recognize faces and they know they know you somehow and that you some some way you fit into their life. But when that short term memory switch goes off and they're pulling from their long term memory or their past. In his mind, he was a much younger man. Maybe he yeah, had maybe back yeah. when he was 20 or 18 or 25. It, it, each person is different. So in his mind, there is no way you could be his granddaughter because he probably hadn't even gotten married and had his own children yet, let alone <laughs> had grandchildren. But he knew he knew you some way, some shape, some form. That remains. So the only thing that made sense to him was to call you your mom's name. Well, I guess when he was pulling for us, he had gotten married and he did have a daughter. Yeah. That's thought you were his daughter. But to him, you, Valerie, as his granddaughter, probably didn't exist yet. So that's where this comes from, is the mm. short-term memory, basically short-circuiting, being yeah. turned off for a period of time. And when that happens, they are living their reality back in another period of time in their life. And you have to follow the cues to figure out what period of their life they regress back to. Since he was calling you your mom's name, that kind of gives you an indication that it did. your mom was in his life. And then my yeah. son, he kept so calling him my older sense? brother. So I was like, oh, yeah, I, I know exactly where this is at. So I didn't like oh. argue or anything, but I just found it interesting, you know, that that was the conversation we had that day was that was where he was at. The best thing to do is just what we call join their reality and go along with whatever their belief is in the um, middle stages that switch will eventually come back on. 
and then he'll be back in the same period of time as you exist and, and be in the same reality. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing anybody can do or say to change the reality once that switch goes off and they're back in a previous period of time in their life. So the best thing to do is just go with the flow. Go with it. And, yeah. You know, that's how, thank you so much. That, you. that was really good. I mean, and I, that's, I, I like that. I like that piece because the switch on and switch off, how but also, experience? yeah, it was what fascinated me about, you know, the face recognition yeah. um, is how he was living in another world and maybe thinking at a younger age of his, your, your mom thinking that it was you because you resemble the features of mm-hmm. your mom. Right. And then, and, and then of course he's, he's remembering the features of someone else. And I think the switch was off during that time because that took him back to his memory. Right. And then when it actually came on, he actually knew who you were, but you had to remind him and probably say, I'm Valerie. Or if you haven't said anything about, I'm Valerie. I, you know what? I didn't say anything mm. when I walked in. Like I've never had to say I never had to say who I was before. Yeah. So when that like happened, I was just kind of like, okay, you know, how are you? You know, I just kind of roll, like you said, I just kind of roll with it because my intention is never to want to like make him argue or make him feel awkward. I obviously knew something was not right, but yeah. you know, my son's little. So he's like, I'm not my, I'm not my uncle. I'm not my, I'm like, just, you know, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Because that switch went off and he was he was back in um probably when he was a younger man and he had you as his daughter and he had he knew he had a son and you two probably resembled a younger version mm-hmm. of your mom and her brother and then in his mind he's like, you know, maybe twenty five years old and he's got a daughter named Valerie and a son whatever his son's name was. And um, then when he snaps out of it and that switch goes back on, then you're his granddaughter again. Yeah, because so you, you want to hear something else? My mom was there. Wow. She was there with me that day. Yeah, I think when the switch goes so off, it's like, it just like his focus his is on you, right? <laughs> it's my soul. <laughs> yeah. In his mind, he didn't have a daughter that was your mom's age at the time. He had right. a daughter. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and you know, of course, it, you know, we can definitely talk about this for two hours because... Right. We definitely love this conversation. This conversation is, I like deep conversations because Alzheimer is an actual disease. Um, but I do want to, of course, um, go to the next question that we do have in regards to working with Douglas Collins. Now, he's been on the show as well. Yes. And you guys have worked together. He's great. Now, as far as how you guys actually connected to be able to write this book, um, can you tell us in regards to uh, how did you guys get connected with uh, the connection for the book itself? Well, I had hired a marketing company to uh, market my first book. And I was in the process of starting the second book, Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's at Secret Faces. And um, the marketing company that I hired sent my first book to a book critic. And he wrote a wonderful um, review of the book. And he called me because my number was in the book, to tell me about how much he related to my stories and the information that was in the book. And it really helped him understand his father who had Alzheimer's disease. Long story short, he referred me to Doug and Doug's wife, who um, have a PR firm. And I called him and we started talking about Um, the second book and marketing strategies for the second book. And Doug and I just worked so synergistically together. He ended up co-writing the second book with me, including um, a training program that we uh, designed. And the rest is just kind of history. We just, because they've had uh, experience with Alzheimer's. They totally related to it. It was a um, topic that they really felt needed um, people to understand too. So we just um, we just had that magic between us. Wow! That one didn't think of, the other did, and it just it was just uh, we complemented each other extremely well. 
Great job. Great, Great chemistry. Job. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. go to some comments because, I mean, you know, we'll get, you know, we'll, you know, Lisa, it's all about you, love. And I think what happens <laughs> is, is that when it's all about you, we forget about everybody else. We can't do that. <laughs> So real quick, we just want to acknowledge our audience. We want to say a hello to Patty Escobar for Patty checking Escobar. in. Hey, Patty. Uh, John T for free. What up, John? Hello to Limitless. Limitless. Thank hello. In. Thank you. Kemba Kelly. Hello. Gio Ortiz. Como ta, Saludo papa? desde Puerto Rico. Eso. Beatrice, Miss B. Hey, thank you for tuning in. And, um... Picasso Cerrado, thank you for tuning in. I know you were jamming out to your song earlier. Uh, we do have a question as well, and it's a great question. Um, I'm sorry. Also, shout out to James Dunn. What um, is there? Is there a way? What is the best prevention? Is there prevention? It's a. It's um, an actually. It's a complicated answer, but my answer to the question. There's nothing that will prevent a person from getting Alzheimer's disease. Wow. But okay. there are many, many risk factors that kind of go into the bucket that will either minimize somebody's risk of developing Alzheimer's disease or increasing a person's risk. Okay. There are, there's a huge list of risk factors and diet, Proper diet, exercise, uh, exercising your brain, medical yeah. conditions, all are part of the risk factors. The fewer the risk factors that you have piled against you, the lower right. your risk is of developing Alzheimer's disease. When you say exercising your brain, are you, are you talking like... Um, because I know my mom used to love crossword puzzles. Are you talking about just um, any type of like reading or what are some examples of Anything exercise in the brain? Makes your brain think. So sitting in front of a television is not, your brain's really not thinking. It's just kind of, you know, zoning out. But the number one uh, thing for improving your brain cognitive abilities, believe it or not, is learning a foreign language oh, or wow. musical. Okay. The reason why is because the parts of the brain that you need to use when you're learning a foreign language to translate the information from one language to another uh, really, really makes your brain think and mm. the neurons are really firing. So, uh, Crossword puzzles are good. Sudoku is good. Uh, anything that really get gets your mind working to think, critical thinking. If, if wow, perfect. Thank I you like for that. that. That's a great answer. Great answer and great advice. Yeah, you know, I think um, I, I think also when we talk about how we massage our brain, right? I think it's I think one <laughs> of the good things about massaging your brain is also you talk about exercising. Um, you know, we, we love you to can dance. Say massaging. So the I, we love <laughs> to dance, and I, I kind of put dancing in an aspect of being able to go out there and mm -hmm. remember people who you dance with, or actually remembering a song that you listen to. I think we had through. Um, I think Doug was talking about this in regards to with music. Playing an instrument also helps you. Yeah. Of some back back in the day yeah. of certain songs that you may heard from Motown or you may heard some country music and those bring back memories of where you were at. You kind of talked about Lisa of you know when you flip off the switch and you go back into your younger uh, go into your younger years. I think music also kind of helps that as well too like because to trigger. the trigger that yeah. yeah so you can actually trigger that to be able to say oh man I remember that you know and I remember this person who I danced with and then <laughs> and then everything was just uh, so nice to be able to try to keep your memory healthy mm -hmm. right. Um, so I, I just want to throw that statement out there because I, I think Douglas was actually talking about that when it came to music. That was also a great point uh, in regards to, you know, Alzheimer's disease. My father was a musician um, and he at he turned 90 and that's when he kind of started having um, Alzheimer's, signs, yeah. the show signs. But he never forgot his kids. Like my mom was sitting next to the bed and she said, hey, do you remember who your kids were? 
and he named off each one of his kids, each one of six of his kids. What about the grandkids? Uh, he remembers some of the grandkids. Did he? Yep. He remembers some of the grandkids as well, too, because some of the grandkids grew up with us, right, as well. I mean, it went too far. And like, see, that's what I thought it was in my situation, because my my brother did kind of grow up with them. He okay. would go to their house. like He would he was babysat by them. Yes. By the time I came around, we had already moved somewhere else. You know I what see. I mean? Yeah. So that, that, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. He remembered all, all the kids. And I think that's I think that's good, because this, this also comes into play. Thank God that we didn't, um, because there's other complications. Lisa, question to you in regards to other complications that goes along with Alzheimer's that you may have ran into. Of course, there's diabetes. There's also cancer. There's, you know, uh, there's, there's uh, women I know that had lupus and things like mm -hmm. that. When they're getting older or around that age, have you ran into a situation um, or is it part of your book as well, too, where there's other criticalities that can't conflict with this? Those actually fall into uh, high risk factors. Mm -hmm. So Alzheimer's disease doesn't cause those diseases, but okay. if you have a heart condition, so cardiovascular disease, if you have diabetes, if you have lupus, if you have even sleep apnea, yeah. all of those risk, all of those are um, risk factors that increase a person's um, chances of developing Alzheimer's disease. But a lot of those diseases are manageable of, okay. through medication and treatment. Sure. So if you do have cardiovascular disease, you're automatically at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. But if yes. that cardiovascular disease is being managed and or treated, then that'll negate that from being a risk factor. Got it. Got, got it. it. Thank you Thank so much. You. We're going to take a real quick break. We have none other than you already know the co-author. She is an author. Lisa Skinner Lisa giving us Skinner. some love in regards to her book. If you're just now tuning in, everyone, we're talking about truth, lives, Alzheimer's. It's secret faces all right everybody so we're going to show you a quick flyer real quick because we have an upcoming guest uh our upcoming guest yes next week we have none other than the singer february freddie 8th k. coming freddie k is going to be in here he was actually on our show before yes he was, he on was our here show. last time for <laughs> valentine's day and he actually sang all <laughs> that day yes. and we were behind him dancing live. so make sure you guys come and check us <laughs> out next week we are going to talk about everything freddie k a great great show <laughs> yeah and he's He's hilarious. I love that guy. He's <laughs> hilarious. And you guys are going to enjoy that. Ya tu sabe mi gente de Puerto Rico, right? He actually is going to be, he might even give us a little tune. We don't know. We have to still yeah, see. Yeah, you never know with Freddie K. So <laughs> yeah. we got to wait till he shows up. So he's definitely going to be on the show with us. Everybody. Make sure you guys tune in next week at 7 o'clock here on the Rico No Suave Show. All right, let's get back. Here we go. All right, everybody. Yes, we have none other. Yes, then Lisa Skinner. Lisa, Skinner. Li Lisa, are you having a good time with us? I am having the best, best time. Thank you so much for having me on. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank Just you you're guys. looking all fabulous with your nice shawl. We love your energy. Your energy is <laughs> awesome. Energy. Your energy is really great. So, you know, because we're getting close to that time, but, you know, we did talk about some really great points. And, and guys, thank you guys so much for commenting um, on, you know, on the show today. We really appreciate that. Um, there are some comments that I you do want to dive, want in? to, um, dive into to a dive few in? comments um, that, you know, John T. Free never knew that there was a difference. And that's good why you have this book, right? Mm -hmm. Because they never knew that there was a difference. And basically kind of what... Um, my co-host was talking about Valerie. You know, we want to distinguish what was it all about. Um, Patty Escobar says both of her grandparents had Alzheimer's. It's such a sad thing seeing how the world goes slowly. And how if, their world goes their slowly. World. I'm yeah, sorry. Yes, their world going slowly. The memories are all you have. Yes. You know, but it's even the day-to-day -day things. Yes. You know, so. And then we have uh, John T. for free. Wow, imagine thinking you're 20 and then being told you're 80 and losing 60 years wow. in the blink of an eye. Wow. It's like the worst time travel. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's sad because you definitely have those, those things that actually happen, Lisa, that you're basically talking hey, about. Hey, and there he is, Dan Moreno. That's my brother <laughs> tuning in. You missed what I had talked about you when I saw our grandfather and he thought, 
Anthony was you, my son, and I was my mom. Um, he says, great topic. What about the history of uh, drug or alcohol abuse uh, or extreme trauma? Do these also increase your chances? Yes. Um, deme- uh, alcohol abuse and drug abuse can cause dementia. It's one of the only dementias that or brain diseases that is reversible. Um, and traumatic brain injury actually is becoming more and more common cause of developing dementia. Um, we see it with a lot of football players and people who have been in, in bad accidents. It's very, it's becoming more and more and more common, but the answer to your question is yes, traumatic brain injury does um, result in dementia for some people, not everybody, but it, it, it will cause dementia. Wow. Thank you. Thank Great you. question, Dennis. So there is a, a comment I do want to read from Beatrice. Beatrice says, Alzheimer's is a horrible disease. My great grandfather had it. It was tough as you will need patience and compassion. And I think that's part mm-hmm. of not just the, the face, but also the heart that goes go along with what's happening. And, you know, I think also dementia also, and this is kind of a phase of what my father went through of depression, mm. uh, because there, there could be times where my mom have to call his name multiple times in order for him to know who he was. And mm-hmm. that was kind of sad because he would actually go into the room by himself and he'll just go to sleep and that's all he knew. And mm-hmm. I think the Alzheimer's is something where you do get kind of fatigued of trying to figure out where I'm at, what am I doing? I also have these other diseases. Do I, can I forget about these other diseases? And it automatically triggers and they know that they have the disease because they have to take pills every day, right? right? That Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? They know that they have these pills, but they understand that there's something else that I'm missing. Something's wrong. Right. With Something's yeah. wrong. Right. So this is really a great subject, Lisa. Um, Such that, a really, really great subject because there's just so much to dive so into. So much. We definitely got to have you back on the show. Uh, and I'm sure. And, and here comes to the next. Um, <laughs> we already talked about the people's reaction, right? Because, of course, you already hear our reactions, right? <laughs> in regards to what they experience. And reading the book, though, you kind of talked about that at the very mm-hmm. beginning. You were also featured on a lot. And we're going to bring up your book real quick. If we can bring up um, the picture. It's, I think it's like... Um, it's a collage of pictures, right? Um, but I think there's one picture that we actually have here um, that you have, uh, of course, in Espanol también. Um, you also have, you know, Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's at Secret Faces. And this is a very, I, you know, I really love the graphics on this uh, as well. So, um, you know, this is, this is a really, really great book that you actually have here. Um, and... People want to find, of course, how to buy your book. Um, I know it's all over, but I think what is what is the ones that you would like for people to actually go to to find out where your book is located? Oh, probably the easiest resource to purchase the book is on Amazon because okay. you can also buy it from other fine booksellers through Amazon. And okay. there is um, a brand new, was just released not too long ago, audio book yeah. that is available and the narrator who did the audio version is exceptional. I recommend listening to the audio book. It's, it's amazing. And nice. that can also be purchased through Amazon. I awesome. love this book because with Alzheimer's or dementia or any other illnesses, right? Yep. We put a lot of focus on the patient, but we don't always put a lot of focus on the people who are caring for them. True. You know, and it's, yes. it's a lot you're going through. Yeah. You know, the different, as you mentioned, faces. You know, as she said, you're going to feel the frustration, the anger. Is it okay even for me? Like earlier, I said, oh, it's so, am I allowed to laugh at your joke? I, is, I feel like I don't even know if I should be able to. Yeah. You know, like you don't know how to feel yeah. in these situations. And you have to be able to maintain your own uh, mental health as well so congratulations on your book thank you so thank much for sharing that yes. with us and giving us a glimpse of that world it was good man i Amazing. had a great time I, me with this thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry oh i just said thanks again for having me it's been a great pleasure to be here and i'd love to come back yes, oh we'd love for you too you, you have to we might we might come out to you 
we might we might we might come out to you so we barely I, we barely got to the appendix we haven't even really gotten to any chapters yet <laughs> your book. but i do have something well, for you there's though there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this disease this is for you this shirt oh. yes we have something for you <laughs> Because you are a gem of the world and you are helping people to discover the secret faces that they may go through when it comes to Alzheimer's by you telling them the truth and also the lies that's behind it. You want them to know that, hey, I have been through it. People have been through it. Here's a story. You have to read the book, right? Um, and this here is you saving the world, right? You are trying to help save the world because it's people like us that makes makes us feel we appreciate you even more because of your projects and your milestones. And this is one big milestone that you have actually done for the world. So this is for you and welcome to the show. Truly, thank you. We got we have to put up your social media because we definitely want people to follow you, right? And that's that's important to us. So we, you know, I I, I you have a lot of them, right? But I want to make sure that I put up a couple of your social media. So let's put up the first one that we have for her. Uh, yeah, Lisa Skinner. And then we also have, I think we have uh, Lisa Skinner on Facebook. Is uh, So we have you there. So please make sure you go ahead and follow her. If you have any questions, just let her know. Don't spam her. Make sure you actually <laughs> just say, hello, how are you? I saw you on the Rico No Suave show. Please add me. <laughs> please add the Rico No Suave show. All right, here's the next one. I think I have a next one there. And this one is uh, Truth, Truth lies, lies and then Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's. I know it's, it's secret faces, but I couldn't fit the whole thing there. But hopefully if they type that in, Lisa, they'll be able to find out more about the book as well, too. And then I think I have one more. I think I have one more for you here. Uh, let's see what we got. Hey, yes. Yeah, so DM Productions. Productions LLC. So we do have that. That was uh, listed as far as one of your um, Insta for your Instagram as well, too. And thanks to Ruth Davis for actually having you here with us. So if you want to find out more information uh, about us, about her, please make sure you go there and follow because she has more projects coming up. Before we let you go, Lisa, um, do you have any other books or any projects that's coming up that we should be aware of? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, we're about to launch a really robust uh, comprehensive training program okay. that oh, amazing. Uh, will really help either family members and caregivers really understand and know how to effectively manage the day-to-day -day challenges that go along with this disease because there's so many and they just come at you unexpectedly and there is a right way and not a right way to approach different situations love yes. it Perfect. thank you lisa so thank you thank, thank you, you so much lisa thank you so much i know we got to let you go and you know we don't <laughs> want to let you go because there's so many things we want to talk about but Thank you so much. And definitely, we're going to definitely keep in contact with you. Of course, I got to send you your shirt. Or I just have you come here and get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say, come, come on, on, on. We want you here. <laughs> can I wait till the snow melts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, course. you can definitely do that. We wait till the snow melts too. <laughs> right. But Lisa, we're going to let you go. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you have you. a great week, a great weekend. And we'll talk to you later, okay? You too, Valerie and Rico. It was so nice to to get to know you too. Thanks. Thank you. you. Thank Put your hands you. together, Lisa Skinner, everybody. All right, everybody, we got to get out of here. But thank you guys so much for being on the show <laughs> with us today. With my Coles Valley Melissa, hey, we hey. had such a great time such with you guys. Time. And thank you guys so much for commenting. And yeah, please. This video, of course, is going to go to archive. And if you want to share this, please share this with your loved ones. It was a uh, good topic. We had a lot of feedback. Man, from I, I, you know, I, yeah. you know, sometimes these are the shows where you want to go longer, yeah, right? We do. Because we do. these are really great topics that we talk about with with Lisa and great people, you know, like her to yeah. be able to say, man, you know what? There's more questions that I actually have because I'm going through that right now, Absolutely. right? I'm going through that with my family. Well, so. thankfully, she's doing those training sessions. Yeah. So anybody out there interested? 
just stay tuned and you know i'm sure we'll mention them out there or you can find her on facebook and, and that's Instagram. something if you're dealing with this issue definitely get some coaching yes and training on please it. do <laughs> all right everybody we got to get out here but we're going to put up our social media so you guys know exactly where to find us yes so make sure you go to www.theregonosuaveshow.com we have of course a new website everybody so make sure you guys go there and check us out there we're uploading new material all the time all right here's the next one Instagram. Instagram. You already know everybody on Instagram. Make sure you please go ahead and follow, follow us there us. now. So if you're on Instagram, follow the show. We got great content. We got great things that's actually coming great up. Great stories. Yes, and great stories as well, too. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Here's the next one. Woo! Facebook. Yeah, I'm hiccuping. <laughs> right. I got Facebook, everybody. I hicked up on the Facebook. Facebook. Yes. Make sure you go there. <laughs> Facebook at Rico No Suave Show. Go ahead and like, like, like it. Love, love, love. Make sure you do that. That's what she said. All right. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> and you know YouTube. we on YouTube. Hey, everybody, go ahead. Our journey on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a YouTube Gmail account, make sure you please go to Rico No Suave Show. And we're building, we're building, we're building on YouTube. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. It's free, everybody. All and you'll YouTubies get and all YouTubers, subscribe, subscribe. Do it. Here we go. <laughs> and then we have nothing but mixcloud.com slash Rico No Suave Show, everybody. Make sure you go ahead and just follow us there because it does go into kind of like podcast, that audio. So if you like to just hear audio while you're driving, you want to re-listen to this as well too, make sure you go to mixcloud.com slash Rico No Suave Show. <sighs> All in one breath. That's what I said. <laughs> we had a great time, everybody. But of course, you already know. I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you guys next week with none other than my man, Freddie K, and my co host, Valerie Melesio. Hey, we'll hey. see you guys next time on next the Rico time. No Suave Show. Salud. Darling. <laughs>